Hi, welcome everyone to today's webinar, How Entrepreneurs Can Leverage Credit Cards. Today's presentation is being recorded and it will be emailed to all participants um, along with the um, link to the recording and the handouts. Uh, questions will be answered at the end of the presentation. If you have any questions, uh, we do ask if you can please put them in the chat or in the Q&A and questions will be answered at the end of the presentation. Next slide, please. Okay, thank you. And on the next slide, uh, we're gonna go ahead and take a quick poll. Uh, let me go ahead and launch that on your screen right now. We just have four questions for you. We would like to know, do you have a merchant account? Do you do business online? Do you have a designated credit card for your business? And the last question at the bottom, uh, do you have a website with a shopping cart? So we'll give you a few seconds to answer those. Okay, thank you to everyone that took that poll. I'll go ahead and the, share the results here for everyone. Um, so it looks like um, 80% of you do not have a merchant account. 80% of you uh, do not do business online. 20% of you do. 80% um, of you have a designated credit card for your business. And everyone um, does not have a website with a shopping cart. Okay, good information. So from here, I will turn it over to today's facilitator, Jerry Detweiler. Uh, so she can go ahead and get started. Jerry, thank you very much for being here today. Oh, thank you, Christina. And thank you so much for the opportunity to talk about business credit cards. It's a topic I love to talk about because um, there's some misconceptions sometimes that trap entrepreneurs. And there's also some opportunities if you choose this wisely. You'll so see my background on the uh, on the screen. And basically, I've been writing about credit and financial topics for a long, long time. I love to answer questions. And so hopefully we'll have time to do that at the end of this presentation. I am education consultant to NAV and NAV is a company that matches uh, business owners to financing. And we have been a SCORE um, sponsor nationally. So we're a big fan of SCORE, what they do to help entrepreneurs. We're, I'm constantly writing um, in my articles why people should make sure that they have a SCORE mentor. So I assume everyone here does, but if you don't, I would encourage you to make sure that you do get one. So let's dive in and we'll talk about small business credit cards. These slides, by the way, will be given to you as a handout, as a PDF handout. So you can take notes, but don't feel like you have to write down everything because you will get a handout that will recap what we talked about. So let's just give an overview of business credit cards in general, because sometimes it's a little bit confusing in terms of what they are. You may see terms like corporate credit card or small business credit card. Generally, speaking, corporate credit cards are for businesses that are established and have significant revenues. So as an example, if you um, want a credit card through American Express for your business, to get a corporate card, if you go on their website and fill out their um, inquiry form, you'll see they tell you, you need at least $4 million in annual revenues to get a corporate card. However, small business credit cards, including from American Express and other issuers, um, often are available to brand new businesses. So as soon as you start your business, very often you may qualify, and we'll talk about that in a moment, for one of these cards. So just to make sure that's clear, the small business credit card is typically available to a wide range of entrepreneurs, ranging from sole proprietors and independent contractors all the way up to businesses that have employees. Once your business gets well-established, you have high revenues, then you will probably be a candidate for what's called a corporate card, which will have higher credit limits and probably more personalized you know, service for your business. So there are some advantages that I wanna talk about up front with small business credit cards. And one is, one of them that I like a lot is that it lets you separate your business and personal credit. It's a good practice just generally to keep your business and personal finances separate, but this adds another dimension to it. And that's because many of these small business credit cards do not show up on the owner's personal 
credit report unless you don't pay. Almost all the small business cards do have a personal guarantee. Not all of them, but most of them do. And the corporate cards tend not to have personal guarantees because they're designed for a bigger business. So if you go to the short link in this uh, on the slide, nav.com slash report, you'll see a list of the major small business credit card issuers and whether or not they report to personal credit. So sometimes it's helpful to keep that activity off your personal credit. We'll talk about that in a moment. Now, the other possible advantage is that you can build business credit. So most of these issuers do report to at least one of the major business credit bureaus, Experian, Equifax, Dun & Bradstreet, or there's an, a data warehouse called the Small Business Financial Exchange that feeds information to those bureaus, and they may report to the SBFE. So that second link there links to a list of small business issuers and which bureaus they report to. So that may be helpful if one of your goals in getting a small business credit card is to build business credit. And it can actually be a very um, helpful way to do that. Once it starts reporting, if you pay on time, it can really add to your credit history. And then the third benefit is fraud prote protection because unauthorized use on a business credit card is covered by the same federal law as consumer cards and your liability is limited to $50. And what that means is essentially a business credit card is the safest way to pay for purchases if the card is compromised. Uh, the most you'll be held liable for is $50 with a little caveat that we'll talk about in just a moment. Now I want to um, go into that little caveat in detail for you because some of you may end up getting cards for employees to use. And if you do so, once you authorize that employee to use the card, you have authorized them to to use it regardless of whether you approve a, a specific purchase. So an example is I got a call once from a business owner who said he had an employee he had given him a um, credit card to fill up his truck on the way out to uh, the job during the day. And this employee went ahead and uh, charged a couple thousand dollars on the card and it wasn't for fuel and he never came back to work. And the business owner said, hey, this um, is unauthorized use. And the credit card issuer said, oh, no, it's not. You authorized them to use the card. So if you are going to provide employee cards, a lot of them now have um, have tools that will help you either limit how much they spend, uh, limit where they spend it, uh, and send you alerts to alert you if there's unusual activity. So you can always take advantage of those tools to try to make sure that you are um, protecting your business from potential unauthorized use. Now, we mentioned the effect of credit cards on your credit score and why you may want to use a business credit card that keeps that activity off your credit report. And this is specifically related to something you may have heard before called debt usage or utilization. On your consumer credit score uh, with a FICO score and with a Vantage score, which is the competitor to FICO, um, they both take a look at how much of your available credit you're using on your individual credit cards. So let's say you have a credit card with a $1,000 credit limit, you have a balance of $700, you're using 70% of your available credit, your utilization is 70%. That's high and that will hurt your credit score. If you can keep that debt off your personal credit reports, then it won't impact your personal credit scores. And that can be an advantage. And here's a real life example. I was at a, um, an event for small business advisors. And one of the advisors told me a story. He said he had a client who had some financing fall through at the last minute. So she maxed out all her credit cards, personal and business. She made it happen. The business did fine. And a year later, she was able to refinance that credit card debt with an SBA loan. And SBA loans don't report to your personal credit. So once she did that, she paid off those credit cards and her high debt usage, which in some cases was 100%, dropped. And her credit scores jumped over 100 points as the result of that. 
So keep an eye on that. If you are someone who has been using a personal credit card for your business, or if you have a credit card that reports to your personal credit and you have high utilization, as they call it, then that can definitely impact your credit scores. And you may want to consider refinancing with a business credit card or even a loan that doesn't show up on your personal credit because that can be valuable for your credit scores. Essentially, at the heart of a credit card, though, we think of it as a convenient way to pay for purchases. Maybe you get rewards off your credit card, but it also is a line of credit. And for many entrepreneurs, this is really essential. Um, I just was uh, re interviewing a business owner um, related to the NAV uh, Small Business Grant. And, you know, he talked about the importance of using his um, business credit card in his business to manage cash flow. And essentially, a credit card does offer a short term line of credit. Now, it may or may not be ideal for your business, it depends. But it is one of the more common types of financing available to very new businesses and even startups. And startup financing can be challenging to get. Um, it's out there, but it can be hard to qualify. Instead, some business owners will end up with uh, credit cards as their initial capital. Now you have to be careful because the interest rates can be high. However, at least at the moment, um, issuers are pretty aggressive about um, trying to find small business customers. And there are a number that are offering 12 to as long as 18 months of 0% financing on a business credit card. And so if you can time it right and you can pay it off before that 0% goes away and the interest rate jumps dramatically, that could be a form of low rate financing that it's available to a, um, to a new business or a business that just may be in growth mode, but for whatever reason has trouble qualifying for other types of financing. And we will talk about qualifying for these cards in just a moment as well. Another reason I see many business owners get um, small business credit cards is rewards. So they're looking for cash back, uh, airline points, um, points they can use for a variety of different you know, uh, purchases, and it can be very, very lucrative. Uh, we saw the credit card issuers really pull back last year, 2020 and 2021 during the recession, but um, during the pandemic, but now they've really been trying to entice new cardholders. And so there are some really good offers out there that will offer you, say, you know, 100,000 bonus points if you spend X amount of dollars in, you know, three months, for example, on this credit card. So those can be very appealing. Sometimes the bonus offers can be worth several hundred or even a thousand dollars or more. You do want to be use it very carefully. You want to make sure that you meet the spending limit requirement within the period of time. It's usually starts the day you're approved, not when the card arrives in the mail, but the day you're approved. And if you have returns or other things um, that bring down that balance, you could possibly just miss it. Or if you miss a payment, um, you may be forfeiting the rewards on your cards. You do want to read that fine print, but it can be a very um, good opportunity to earn um, points. And with more business owners wanting to travel or even just get cash back, it can be very uh, appealing. Now, the, the great thing about a small business credit card is that you don't need a business with lots of revenues to qualify unless you're trying to get a corporate card. Then you will need, you know, demonstrated references for um, one of these cards. But most small business credit cards make the decision primarily on two factors, credit and income. And for credit, most of them don't check business credit. Most of them instead will check the applicant or the owner's personal credit. And they'll be looking usually for a credit score in the 680 to 700 range or higher. Some of the premium cards may want to see a 700 FICO score or higher. Uh, there are a few cards that will dip down to about the 650 credit score range. So if your personal credit is good to excellent, you probably have a card that you'd have you know, a shot at, at qualifying for. And then income can come from all sources, not just the business. So if you have uh, if you have a side hustle and you have a day job, or maybe you have a spouse or partner who would be willing to pitch in and pay the bill if you know business was slow, 
um, you may include that income in your application and that could help you qualify. So you don't necessarily have to have a business earning revenues to qualify for many of these cards. Not all of them, but many of them are very flexible. You just have to have sufficient income all around, regardless of where it's coming from. Another thing I didn't mention here that is also relevant is that these are usually industry agnostic. So there are industries that some lenders don't like to lend into, and it varies from lender to lender, and that can make it hard to qualify, but usually it's pretty industry agnostic. So it does open up funding to a wider range of businesses than certain business loans. And then finally, as we mentioned before, when you do choose a card, you want to just make sure you understand how it's going to report, where it's going to report, and that you, of course, pay on time so that you don't miss payments and affect either your business or your personal credit, depending on how they report. So then choosing a credit card, there's lots of options out there. Um, I've written about credit cards for NAV and, and there's a lot of details to sort through. So uh, just a few um, pointers that I wanna give you that hopefully will help you narrow your search a little bit so you can find cards that are more relevant. Um, one is the interest rate if you plan to carry a balance. So as I mentioned, there are some cards that offer 0% APRs. There usually is a fee for that. So for example, you might get 0% for 12 months, but there'll be a 3% fee, 3% uh, tacked right on the front. That's for a balance transfer. For purchases, there are some business credit cards that are offering 0% for purchases for a year. And so that's based on a calendar year not, or a year from when that when you start taking advantage of that offer, when it's offered, not when you make the purchase. So in other words, if you make a purchase on June 15th, uh, or July 15th, it's still within that one year period that they offer you the 0%. So make sure you make a note of when that expires and just jot it on your calendar if you're not sure. It probably will tell you on your billing statement as well, but what you don't want to do is forget that that 0% is up and then the interest rate goes up dramatically and suddenly you're stuck with some high interest rate debt. And the other thing I like to do is to just uh, plan, if it's a balance transfer, for example, let's say for $3,000, divide that $3,000 by the time period of the 0%, maybe it's 12 months, divided by 12, and then you just pay that amount on auto pay each month. So you know that you know when that 0% is up, you've paid it off, you're not worrying about a higher interest rate, that's helpful. If you don't plan to ever carry a balance, then you're going to look at uh, fees as the main cost factor. And some of these premier premium rewards cards can carry high annual fees. We're talking in the $600 range, but there are quite a few that are available in the you know, $100 range. And then there's zero, no annual fee cards as well. I would judge it by the spending and the benefits that you'll get. So I do have one credit card that has a very high annual fee. Um, it's my personal card, but I charge everything on it. And between the benefits that I get from the card, as well as the um, points that I use for travel, it pays for itself. That's not always going to be the case. So, so those who want to do a little bit of uh, homework. And then you also want to make sure that you understand any penalty fees that are associated with this card so that you make sure that you um, try to avoid, for example, late fees or over the limit fees, which can be pretty pricey. There's different rules that apply to business credit cards as opposed to consumer credit cards and the fees can be higher. And then if you are looking for rewards, um, it can be challenging to figure out what's best for you, but a couple of guidelines that I like to go by. Um, one is if you're very loyal to a particular brand that you use frequently, for example, you fly Delta or you fly um, United, you know, their co-branded card, and you are someone who flies, right? You're someone who does travel. Then the co-branded card can often be very appealing because you're going to get so many extra benefits like the free check bag or the priority boarding, et cetera, from that card. Do review it to make sure. I was just looking at one credit card that does not give a free check bag, which I found very shocking because everybody else does that. Um, so you do want to review and make sure those benefits are important to you. Another one that's really beneficial for many people who travel is if the card offers primary 
car rental insurance. So that that means that in many cases, at least for covered events, you don't even have to submit it to your car insurance. You can submit it to them. It's usually up to a certain dollar amount. That primary car rental insurance can save you a lot of money and rental insurance, or at least a lot of hassle. Even if you have good car insurance, you don't want to see your car insurance rate go up. That can be a very valuable benefit as well. If you're not particularly loyal to a certain brand, then, and you want travel benefits or points, then cards like um, Chase Ultimate Rewards cards are very valuable because they're very full. Flexible Capital One Venture cards, those uh, Capital One has recently rebranded or revised its programs and they have some um, flexible travel benefits. Those might be ones you want to look into, or you may just want cash. So every business owner can usually use cash. So a cash back credit card can be um, very helpful. And here, look at both the ongoing rate for most purchases on cash back, as well as any categories where you might earn extra points. It's getting a little bit feeling like you're going down a rabbit hole because some of these will offer, say, twice the amount of cash back on purchases in your top two spending categories or extra cash back in certain spending categories like online advertising or um, office supply stores. So you have to make sure that it coincides with what you actually like to spend on. If you do end up with multiple rewards cards, there are several apps now that you can link that will actually tell you which card is best to use for each purchase if you want to get into that. You may not want to, it may be too much work, but if you want to, there are actually apps that you can use to choose um, which card you want to use. And I did a roundup story of those um, on my Forbes column about a month ago, and I'd be happy to, um, I'll share that afterwards so we can include it in the follow-up for the webinar if that's of interest. But hopefully that gives you a little bit to think about. Now, if you don't have good credit and you're having trouble qualifying for a card, there aren't many secured um, business credit cards yet. I've I've heard talk that there are some coming. Right now, Wells Fargo is the main issuer for secured business credit cards, and you do need to go into a branch to apply. Um, But being in California, you should have no problem doing that. Uh, And that could be a way to build some credit and get a credit card. You will need to put a deposit to get the credit card, but that could help you build your um, business credit while you're working to work on your personal credit to hopefully qualify for a different card. All right, so let's talk about some best practices. If you're using a business credit card, it is absolutely crucial that you make that minimum payment on time. And the reason is it's even more important than your personal card. And the reason is there's a federal law, the Credit Card Act, that applies to consumer or personal credit cards that does not cover business credit cards. And so if you are a day late with your consumer credit card, you'll get a late fee and they'll charge you interest, but they aren't going to jack the interest rate up. They used to be able to do that until this law, you know, went into effect. It was about 12 years ago now. Um, With business credit cards, that's not the case. So almost every business credit card issuer that I've looked at, they, they, they do a lot of things that are spelled out in the Card Act in terms of protections voluntarily. But all of them that I've reviewed um, retain the right to raise your interest rate if you're a day or even an hour late with a payment. So if you forget and you don't make that payment, your interest rate on your existing balance on your business credit card could go up dramatically. As long as you make the minimum payment, that's not going to happen. So what I recommend you do, if at all possible, is to at least set up auto pay for the minimum payment. If you don't want the, you know, uncertainty of setting up to pay the balance in full, or if you want to make sure you review your statement to make sure all the charges are valid, whatever it may be, um, that's okay. But make sure you have that minimum payment on auto pay. 
Also, you can set up alerts on your card to tell you when a payment's due, when a payment's been made. If there's a card purchase over a certain amount, if the balance goes above a certain amount, uh, there's lots of different alerts you can set up. You don't want to set up so many that you just ignore them and you just scroll through them and you don't pay attention. But if there are alerts that can help you stay on top of those cards, that can be very, very helpful. I highly recommend you only use your business credit card for business purchases. It's very easy as a business owner to, um, to end up commingling and it can be problematic, um, not just for your bookkeeping and accounting purposes, but if you have a LLC or a S corp or a C corp, it can actually be an issue for pr the protecting the integrity of your corporation. So um, whenever possible, try to use it only for business purchases. Now it may happen. I, I had a business credit card and a personal credit card from the same issuer. They look exactly the same except for the card number and the word business on one of them. And it did get used for some personal purchases. I just, you know, uh, assigned it properly in my bookkeeping, made a note as to what happened, and you try to try to avoid that going forward. Um, but it is really important to try to separate those as much as possible. Uh, another strategy on the reward side is sometimes getting one of each. So getting a personal credit card of the same type as the business credit card, and then having those double rewards. And sometimes you can transfer them back and forth between the two accounts. So I used that strategy a few years ago to get a Southwest Companion Pass where I was able to have someone fly for free with me um, for a year uh, by getting a lot of points from my personal and my business Southwest credit card at the same time. And it, it, that's another strategy that can be helpful. Uh, be very careful when using cards, when giving cards to others. So again, if you authorize them to use the card, you authorize them to use the card and you don't. You can't later say, well, I didn't want them to spend it on X or um, I didn't want them to, you know, make that purchase. Uh, at that point, it's between you and that employee or business partner or wh whomever you share that card with. So just be very, very careful about that. And then review your terms and rewards annually. Things do change. Uh, fortunately, in the past year, we've seen it moving in a positive direction, like better rewards, um, better terms, but that also means there's new cards coming out that may be more appealing for your business or maybe a better choice for your business. Typically, the average small business has about four credit cards. So um, there's probably some room there if you uh, feel like you can manage it and you aren't worried about accidentally paying late or running up debt, there may be some room for some cards that might be helpful for your business to um, either separate out types of purchases or to earn additional rewards. I will give you um, a resource here and then um, and then we'll go to some questions um, at NAV. Um, NAV does have the largest marketplace of business credit cards. And if you have a NAV account, you can actually get matched um, through NAV's match factor. It'll, it's not a pre-approval, but it will screen for the factors that the issuers are looking for, like credit score, and show you ones that you're more likely to be a fit for based on your qualifications. So the, the last time that NAV researched that, um, NAV customers who use match factor to find a credit card were three and a half times more likely to be approved. If you do decide to sign up for NAV, it's free. It doesn't impact your credit score. Um, you can go to nav.com slash score and get a free account, monitor your business credit to your financing options and um, check out business credit cards and see which ones may be helpful. So that's the overview of what, how I want to, what I wanted to share about business credit cards today. And I am more than happy to take questions after um, Christina tells you about the score resources. Thank you, Jerry. Such valuable information there. Um, so just a little bit about SCORE resources. Uh, you can visit our website, which is SCORE.org, or you can go to our local website, which is centralvalley.score.org. And here you're going to find a ton of information. You're, you can find our resource library. We have on-demand um, and live webinars on there pre-recorded for you um, and previous webinars as well that are recorded and posted on there. Um, so you can go to our website there, sign up for upcoming workshops. If you would like to request a mentor, you can go to score.org forward slash find dash mentor, and we can pair you um, 
to the right mentor that can help you uh, advance your career or if you're looking to start your business, SCORE is there for the life of your business. Uh, if you have some free time and you would like to volunteer, we are always looking for volunteers to join SCORE. You can visit www.score.org forward slash volunteer. And on the next slide, we'll just go ahead and take a quick exit poll. Let me go ahead and put that on everyone's screen now. Okay, uh, we have three questions. Do you have a better understanding of how to use credit cards for your business? Uh, would you like to request a SCORE mentor with credit experience? And would you recommend SCORE to a friend? So I'll give you a few um, seconds to answer those questions. In the meantime, keep those questions coming. We have a lot of good questions here in the chat, Terry. <laughs> good. Yeah. All right, it looks like the majority of you voted. Thank you very much. Let me go ahead and share the results for everyone. So everyone found um, uh, today's webinar, uh, they understand more on how to use the credit card for their business. Um, uh, we're about 50-50. Uh, you would like to request a mentor with credit experience, perfect. I will drop the link to request a mentor in the chat for you to just click. And uh, everybody will recommend SCORE to a friend. Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> as hey, they should uh, yeah thank you <laughs> all right so um if you'd like jerry let's go ahead and uh bring down the powerpoint presentation okay. and uh that way we can go ahead and get into the questions here so let me start i'll start in the chat and then go into the q a so so question for marcy does it affect your credit poorly for high debt usage if paid off every month that's a great question. I'm so glad you asked that question, Marcy. So here's what happens. Most issuers are going to report your balance at the close of the billing cycle. That's when, you know, they end it for the month and they say, here's how much you owe us. Here's how much, you know, you can make the minimum payment or you can pay in full if your card lets you make minimum payments. Um, that usually gets reported to the credit bureaus before your payment is due. So it is not uncommon for somebody who pays in full but uses their card heavily or who has a small credit limit to see that they're very highly um, leveraged or highly has high utilization. So in that case, what I recommend is going in, maybe making an online payment about five days before the close of the billing cycle. And that's on your statement. So if you've looked at your credit card statement, maybe when you're doing your bookkeeping, it'll say, you know, the, the statement closing date is February 12th. So maybe you go in on February 7th, you make a payment online so that it gets credited. And that way the ending balance is lower and the balance that shows up at the credit, um, bureau is also lower and one other strategy there that we touched on but just keep in mind is if you do have credit card debt for your business and you refinance it using a loan so let's say it's a business term loan maybe it's an sba loan maybe a micro loan uh typically those if those loans don't show up on your personal credit they won't affect you at all but even if they do typically something where you have a fixed monthly payment like a you know a, a three year loan that usually does not calculate debt usage so you can still see in many cases see some improvement to your credit score by getting those balances off the credit cards and onto um, a, a regular loan product all right thank you and um, how open are banks and SBA to refinancing credit card debt? Um, many of the SBA loan programs do allow for certain um, refinancing as long as it improves the financial cash flow of the business. So um, it may be possible, uh, and it also may be possible to use a non-SBA um, business loan to refinance some of your debt. So both could be an option as uh, if it makes your business more financially viable. And uh, how should a partnership LLC business request their credit card? Um, so you would apply with the name of the LLC and most of the small business credit cards, the ones that are not corporate cards do want a personal guarantee. So there will be a person who has to apply. And so that person will be taking on the personal guarantee for the business. So you have to be super careful. I've just heard so many stories over the years where, 
you know, one business partner decides to leave the business, but is stuck with a credit card debt or one partner leaves the business and the other one's stuck with a credit card debt. So I would make it part of your operating agreement um, and then have some sort of agreement between you as partners for in case something goes wrong that you figure it out. And then you might also decide, hey, one partner is going to apply for this credit card. The other one's going to apply for that one. And then we're going to use them for these types of expenses and keep an eye on the balance. Uh, I would also recommend if you're not the person who applied that you are put on the alerts or given access to keep track of what's going on. Um, it, it, because the, it still could bring the business into the scenario where there's some business liability, but ultimately most of these cards are going to have personal liability for the person who applied for the card. And so if the business doesn't pay, that person can be personally liable. Okay. Uh, if we max the credit card or spend the 70%, like you said, uh, if we pay the amount off that following month, they're all due. Wouldn't that show a resilience and ability to pay back with in, uh, in difficulties, circumstances, and raise the credit without it dipping down at all, like the 100 points in your example? Yeah, that's a great question. So first of all, I should just mention that there's no um, specific number for high utilization. It varies by credit scores, but most most consumer credit scoring models will, you'll start to see the effect of higher balances when you get to 20 to 30% utilization. So most, now I've, I have a long credit history, so I can get away with, you know, 30, 35% utilization and my credit score really isn't that impacted. Um, a young person just starting out would probably see a big impact from 35% debt usage. So, and that's, I'm using those terms interchangeably. So I just don't want you to think that there's a certain number because it kind of varies depending on everything in your credit report and credit scores. Um, the problem is that most credit scores are just a snapshot in time. And so they don't, they don't take into account that you did that. They just look at what's the balance right now and what's the credit limit right now. And that creates the credit score. There is a move in the industry toward what they call trended data, where it looks at the trends of the the um, the payment history and the credits, the utilization, et cetera, but those aren't widely used right now. So right now, your credit score is created when it's requested based on what's available at that moment in time. And so if it's 70%, it's 70%. It doesn't say, oh, look, they only had 20% last month or, oh, look, it's you know, it's 20% now, but it was 70% a month ago. It doesn't just doesn't take into that, that into account. So for you, what that means is that you want to look at that, look at what your balance is at the end of the billing cycle, compare it to the credit limit and, and just see if that's affecting your credit score. If you see your credit score dip and you haven't paid late, you haven't opened a new account. The only thing on there is that debt usage, it's probably impacting your credit score. And you may want to try to figure out a strategy to get around that. Okay, another question. Um, hi, Jerry, I'm a conscious consumer that wants to own business credit cards from issuers that have the most sustainability oriented policies in place that don't use money they make from my purchases to support the fossil fuel industry and sectors that one would not deem pro-social. How can I find uh, these business credit card issuers? Do you know of any that do not greenwash or at the very least donate some percentage to charities? That's a great question. Um, I don't know the answer, first of all. Um, the business credit card market, at least for small business credit cards, is has been dominated largely by the major issuers. But what we've seen over the past two years, is there have been a lot of financial technology companies that have partnered with banks to create their own credit cards. And so I think you'd have a little bit of a double challenge there is one is you'd have to look at who's the issuer and then who's the bank behind it. Because typically you will see that you'll see the name of the issuer and then you'll see the, the issuing bank or credit union. Um, uh, a credit union or a community bank might be a great place for you to start. Some of them may have small business credit cards and you may just generally find them to be, you know, is, uh, you know, uh, sticking with the values that you find important. Um, but it's a great question. I don't know the answer and I'll have to see if I can 
find any that are focused on that right now. Um, if we call them to try to get better terms and rewards, do they really agree to lowering the interest percentage often? Or is that a thing that we're lucky if we get a representative that would extend a lower rate for us? It seems like increasing credit line is something they'd be far more likely to agree to. Yes, you're exactly right. So it's very unusual um, for issuers to lower the interest rate. Uh, they might help you find a better product that you qualify for, um, but typically what I see the most success negotiating is the fee or um, like a penalty fee, for example, getting a late fee waived or um, moving into a no fee product. So an example is I had a credit card that was co-branded to an airline that went out of business and the issuer um, was a major bank and I didn't want it anymore. I had an annual fee. It didn't make sense to me. And so they moved me to a no annual fee credit card. So I just that card replaced the other card as far as my credit history goes. I still had the credit line. I still had access to it, but I wasn't paid an annual fee. Um, but generally, I find that issuers are very hesitant to lower interest rates uh, unless, again, you qualify for a different product that they offer and they're willing to move that credit line that you have over to that other product once you qualify. That's also another strategy too, by the way. You maybe you have a card, a couple cards from the same issuer. You don't want one anymore because you're paying extra annual fees. You could ask to have that credit line added to your existing card. I did this a year ago, um, not flying much with the pandemic and decided I didn't need you know that many credit cards, co-branded credit cards in the airline. So I consolidated and kept the credit line, but on one account. So that's an option. And how does nav.com make money? Does forming an account with them result in them having access and selling our data to data brokers or they like? Yeah, good yeah. question. So NAV does not sell information to lenders. Um, instead, it uses information from lenders to match them to um, products. And then if you actually say, yes, I'm interested, I want to apply at that point, obviously you're sharing your information with the lender, but they don't sell information to lenders to find you. It's more of an inbound type thing, you know, bring the lender to you. And then if there's a match, NAV will get paid a marketing fee for matching you to a loan product. Good question. Um, is nav.com like annualcreditreport.com? Are they recommended by the government like annual credit report by the is by the government agency? No, no. So annualcreditreport.com was created out of legislation and it's required by law to be provided um, to consumers to get their personal credit reports for free. It was once a year. Now it's uh, once a week, I think. I think it's still doing the once a week with the after the pandemic. Um, so that's a government mandated website um, by all the major credit bureaus. There's no requirement in federal law that um, business owners be shown business credit. And so NAV initially started more like a Credit Karma, where um, NAV was the first site to show, and still the only one, to show um, uh, business owners free business credit data from the major um, business credit bureaus, as opposed to consumer like it is with Credit Karma. So probably Credit Karma would probably be a better analogy. Okay, um, to achieve the highest total credit line amount to our name, what tips do you have um, for a higher credit, higher starting credit limit on the first business credit card we open. I have a high credit score personally, but made no money the last couple of years other than unemployment. Uh, but I'm about to make 75,000 to 150 over the next 12 months with everything I have in place. <laughs> yeah. So, so depending on what your, you know, what your credit line is now, if, if you've already got the card, then you're in a good position. If you've been using the card actively and paying it on time, then you're probably in a good position to request a credit line increase, but there will be a question about income. Now we're in the middle of 2022. And if you can project, you know, X amount by the end of the year, they, you know, they're talking about your annual income, so they're probably fine with you making that projection. And as I mentioned, if you have any other income sources that you want to include, you can do that to include it. Um, otherwise, you might want to wait till some more income is coming in and then um, ask for the uh, credit line increase. But usually it's a pretty... It's a pretty um, uh, automated process where you're just going to get... They're going to check your credit. Is your credit good? Are you not 
you know, no red flags, like really high utilization on other cards or late payments. And then, um, the, you know, the, just running the income through the formula and that's usually what they use to approve it, but they're usually pretty, pretty happy to give some credit line increases to customers who are good customers who are really actively using the card. All right. Pretty good questions here. I have one more long one here, Jerry. Let me read. <laughs> uh, so if I haven't been profitable as a sole proprietor during the pandemic and am incorporating an LLC this week, would a bank I approach allow me to open a business bank account and business credit card the same day? I was told off the record that maybe it would be better for me to generate a few months of income before attempting to open a business credit card so that the bank could give my business credit card a higher starting credit limit? Or would it be wiser to form an account right away at a very low credit limit because no income and ask for a big raise six months to a year later when we have good cash flow coming in? Yeah, so the bank um, probably is going to do something similar to any other credit card, which is where it's run through a an automated, you know, system for underwriting the credit card. So you could just ask their, you could ask the bank's policy even before you open it and just say, do you require a certain time in business for the credit card? If not, if it's like most of the major small business credit cards, they don't care about time in business. They just care about your personal credit scores and your income from all sources. In which case, you know, if you just started, well, I guess you said you, the business hit, had low income during the pandemic. So really it's, going to be your, the amount of credit line you get is not going to be so much tied to the business revenue as the total income that you can put on the application in most cases. So, and I really don't think it hurts to ask. The only thing is I'm not sure the, if you're talking to, for example, a bank teller, they're going to really know what, how that decision is made. So you, you know, you just need to sort of gauge it on your own, how you, whether you want to go ahead and ask for it, but if you pay it on time, and your business continues to grow, you should be able to ask for a credit line increase. So use it actively, you know, pay it on time. They like that. Remember the, the, the credit card issuer is going to make money every time that card is swiped. That's where they make a lot of money. Yes, they love balances. They love charging interest on credit cards. That's interest income. But every time you swipe that card, they're going to make a little bit of money. So the more you use the card, the more money they make and the more they want to make sure that you don't go somewhere else. So using the card and keeping it active is what, you know, is what's going to help you get more enticing offers in many cases from these issuers, as long as your credit score doesn't drop or something, you know, negative doesn't uh, impact that decision. And um, what information does NAV need to check business credit? Um, when you sign up for your account, you will be asked um, verified information because it does pull your personal credit from experience. So you do, um, it's a soft pull. It doesn't affect your credit score, but you do need to put in a social security number. And then um, for the business, you'll put in the name and I think it's the zip code of your business. And then any possible matches come up and you say, yes, that's my business. You claim the business that's yours. And then if you have business credit and then NAV will show you the reports. If you don't have business credit, then you'll use tools that we have at NAV to build business credit, get started with accounts that report. Not every business automatically has a business credit report, especially if they don't have many accounts under the name of the business, they might not. And so then you have to build some business credit. But as you do, then you know, you'll know you monitor each month and see see how you, you progress in building business credit. Okay. Um, are there any advantages to opening a business credit card with a bank we have longstanding relationship with? Or would I not be a loss if switching banks to a more socially responsible one and opening a business credit card with them? Um, the adva possible advantage of opening it where you have an established banking relationship is if they offer benefits for the integrated relationship. So um, I think Bank of America, for example, does this where with other accounts, you can get certain benefits with your business credit card. Um, so that would be the main reason to have it. Otherwise, a lot of times, a lot of business owners have their business bank account somewhere, and then they get the credit cards that they think are the best credit cards for them, even though they aren't affiliated with that particular bank. Remember, every time you, whenever you open a business bank account, they're going to give you a business debit card. And I didn't really emphasize this, but um, business debit cards do not 
have the same protection under federal law that even your consumer debit card does or your business credit card. So in the case of liability, there's not the same protections. Now, most issuers are going to try to make you whole if your business debit card is compromised, but there's no federal law that says they have to do this, you know, in certain a period of time, like with the other types of cards. So um, just keep that in mind. You know, it's really your choice as to whether you want to get a credit card from another institution or use the business credit card from that bank for some purchases and they get another credit card for other types of purchases. Remember the average business owner has about four cards. So they may have different cards for different purposes. They may need large credit lines, in which case one card may not be sufficient and they may need to have several different credit cards to reach the credit limits that they need at different times in their business. Or maybe there's a low interest rate card for when you carry a balance and then a, uh, a card with great rewards for your day-to-day purchases. There's a variety of ways you can tackle that. Where can we find those few credit card issuing companies that do not require personal guarantee? Is there a list somewhere? Yeah, um, they're corporate cards. So tip, I can tell you a few off the top of my head, um, Divi, Brex, um, gosh, I was just looking at these a few days ago. If you, if you Google corporate cards, you're going to see ones that don't require personal guarantee. But again, the corporate card is going to require your business has, you know, some good revenues. So if you're a new startup, you're probably going to have to provide a personal guarantee on the card. Does nav.com require us to show how many employees we have and revenue range like Dun and Bradstreet? I uh, know uh, there may be a question. Of, I don't even think there's a question about that. Well, there is a question about revenues. And the reason we uh, the reason that nav asks about revenues is to match you to financing offers. So if a lender, for example, has a minimum revenue requirement of $100,000 a year and you make $50,000, you're not a good match. So that's helpful to match you better, but it's not it's not required. And it's not going to be sold to anybody. It's not used for marketing purposes. So it's really just to help match you to possible lending options. Uh, this one's following up with that personal guarantee. Um, so do all the small business credit cards require personal guarantee? I thought I heard you say that some may not require it. All the major small business credit cards, like the ones you'll see on those lists that I mentioned to you, the ones where I had the URLs for which ones report to business and which one report to personal credit, those all require personal guarantees. I think Divi might, I'm, I'm pretty sure Divi does not though. So that would be one to check. That would be an exception on that list. Otherwise, there's going to be a personal guarantee on all those. And the personal guarantee, again, that's if you default. So if you don't, pay, if the business doesn't pay it, they may try to collect personally from you, the business owner. And that's unfortunately pretty common at that, you know, at the smaller business level. How often is too much to ask for credit line increases on our business credit card, in your opinion? Hmm, that's a great question. Occasionally, a credit line increase can be a hard inquiry. Usually it's a soft inquiry, which means it doesn't affect your credit scores. But uh, maybe if you've done it once, just check your credit reports to see if it shows up on your personal credit as inquiry, because uh, most of them do do at least a soft credit check. But um, and then, you know, I, I don't know the rule of thumb. I would say, you know, if you really need it and there's a good explanation and your business has the financial capability to manage it, um, then maybe you try again. You don't get it the first time. Maybe try again in a couple of months. Or if you really need it, you get a, the answer you don't want. You might ask for what's called a reconsideration request. So you say, hey, is there anyone who can reconsider this request because my business can really use this and you know, we're going to make money off of it. And uh, we plan to put a lot of charges on the card and, and you may get funneled to a department that might be able to help override that. I've seen reconsideration requests be successful, for example, for um, new card holders who just started their business or for somebody who has a few cards already and they're getting a new card and they get declined, but then they talk to the issuer and they're able to... Um, you know, demonstrate it's not fraudulent and, and get the card that they need. So it's, it's worth a try. Hey, uh, could you talk about establishing trade lines to get up and going and build our business credit score so we can attain greater business credit? Any suggestions on your end? 
Yeah, Christina, remind me, we just did a presentation on building business credit, right? We have that. Yes. 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 So that would be great to watch the replay of that presentation. That would give you the steps. And um, we do have a build business credit checklist uh, that should be associated with that webinar uh, that is probably on the on the SCORE website, right? That they can download there. Yeah, we actually have the link yeah. to the recording on our YouTube page. Um, so oh, I'll go ahead and drop okay. the link in the chat for our YouTube page. Okay. Yeah. So we did a presentation on that, but an easy place to get started was with vendor accounts. If you go to nav.com slash vendors, uh, you will see easy to get vendors that don't check personal credit, don't report to personal credit and who help you build business credit. So that would be one place to get started. Okay, Jerry, uh, looks like those are um, all the questions. Uh, somebody did put a testimonial. Um, I recently used NAV to open my first American Express account for my new hmm. LLC. Oh, it took yeah. 30 minutes. Perfect. Congratulations. Good, good. <laughs> all right. So thank you everyone for attending today's webinar. We will see you. Hopefully uh, you are all able to join us tomorrow with Reva. We have email marketing 101 tomorrow and um, everyone will receive a, a link to the recording today along with the handouts that Jerry did. So thank you very much. I will send those uh, within an hour and uh, SCORE mentors and Jerry, please stay on. Thank you everyone.